friends. I'm Sandra Champlain. If you don't know who I am, you might because we're watching this here on Facebook and you see it under my name. I'm here with my two, well, two of my closest friends, Carrie McLeod and Philip Dykes. And we just finished our Sunday gathering, which was amazing. And I thought it would be good to just kind of catch up with them. It has been two years since we did our first online mediumship demonstration, and we've got some really good ones coming up. So I thought this could be a catch up and we can let people know what's coming up because who doesn't love having proof of the afterlife? So hi guys. Hello, I cannot believe that it's two years since Save the Jew. We did a live demonstration with all the, the money that was raised going to save the children. I think there was something like two and a half thousand dollars. Was it was fanta to them. fantastic. And I remember Sand Sandra saying, wait, what, what about if we do this? And we went, yeah, and thought, <laughs> what if we just said yes to? Um, but no, we absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and that's how the start journeys really started, yeah, hasn't long it? Long before. Fantastic. This COVID thing that's hung about a bit longer than we thought, this was long before that. I think this, the spirit world is strategic. It's not like they can predict the future, but they knew something was brewing. And, you know, they make it seem like it's our ideas, like I just got this thought, but I think it was planted in my mind because since then, and you're right, it was well over $2,000, 2,000 pounds, well over that in US dollars. And we didn't know, could we take something that was normally done live, you guys doing readings on an audience and do it on a virtual audience. And since then, I don't know how many hundreds of people that we have connected with loved ones in the afterlife. I have no idea. And before we go on too long, I just want to tell people what's coming up. First of all, there is a demonstration coming up with our friends Paul Jacob and Sue Wood, which is a evidential mediumship demonstration where he'll be giving verbally the evidence to participants in our Zoom room of loved ones in the afterlife and she'll be drawing their pictures. So that's pretty cool. And on August 6th, we have a demonstration with Carrie and Phil, which is beautiful. I know we get a taste of the mediumship demonstrations in our Sunday gatherings, which is lovely. We get to get five or six loved ones that come through showing everybody that love survives death but this is just a full packed event with just the demonstration of mediumship so that's coming up and then we've got our august courses which we can talk about but let's just talk you guys are my friends i haven't seen you in forever face to face to give you a smooches um but it's so nice that we get to catch up every week online I mean, it's better than nothing and we're inspiring Absolutely. I think that's something with the, the community that we've got. Who would have known that 18 months into this time of um, COVID, we've got such an, an enormous online community of people that have become weekly participants. Mm -hmm. we, we see some people four times a week on the Tuesday, Way to Your Spirit, on the Wednesday Psychic Class, and the Thursday mediumship class on the demonstrations on the weekend workshops and then the sunday gathering and even better we're now seeing that all that hard work work paying off because we've now got participants of the community demonstrating on the sunday gathering demonstrating the student demonstrations it, it's it's absolutely wonderful it just feels us so full of pride what we've all created here it's given a, a new meaning to hope and to the platform of mediumship it, it, it's really inspiring when you think about it and it's really heartfelt when we hear them speak and and talk about the support and how they've helped each other and, and even tonight where Kiwa has demonstrated for the first time on the Sunday gathering and it's a first Sunday service as well and um, how the community has come out with loads of support personal messages emails even on Facebook, it's been incredible just to see. And it's overwhelming, isn't it? Mm. And, I, and I think the three of us can be really proud of what we've achieved here. Because mm. there is that, within that community, we hear from people that have lent, reached out and lent a hand to people on some of the Tuesday classes when some of our participants are having low moments. Others are messaging us saying, can I reach out to them just to have a chat with them for half an hour. So we link them up, connect them up. It's a wonderful thing because yes, we are a community here, but there's such a huge group of people that are all like-minded 
all wanting to lend support. That's something really special. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel so much love right now. And each Sunday gathering is a different theme. We're out to inspire in each and every one and prove the existence of the afterlife, but also to give tools for the week. And this one was on confidence. And I know we were kidding about our knees shaking under the table, but I actually do feel butterflies in my stomach each time, every time. And a shout out to Kira, who did a fabulous job doing the demonstration. And you guys have done a ton of medium demonstrations. Do you still feel those nerves before each one? Yes, very simple answer, yes. We, we're aware of the nerves and, and we often say to ourselves, without them nerves, we get a little bit worried. We know that power's coming in that feels like the nerves, the butterflies, and we know what's happening and we control that power. But yeah, we, we're always nervous. We don't take anything for granted. We never know if the spirit world will show up. And it's one of those things, we have faith, we have belief. We know that it's their chance to reach out, but we never want to become complacent. Uh, and that's the thing. And we're always learning with the spirit world. Like we said tonight, there's no script. We don't know how they're going to communicate in which way. But it, it's a thrilling experience to have them talk and have them show us and have them impress upon us. But yes, we, we still get nervous. It, it, um, I, you often see me losing my words and everything else. Um, and it's not always because of nerves, but um, I'm three or four sentences ahead when I'm, when I'm talking. But it, it, it's something that's part of me. Um, but I think everyone, whatever what line of work they do, gets nervous at some point. And I think it's healthy to have that. Mm. Mm. Oh, just being with you guys. I'm, what's going to my mind right now is let's tell people some things about us that nobody knows, shall we? So let's, let me put you on the spot for a second. Um, and I'll tell mine too. One of your most favorite memories that you can just remember super duper duper clear. I'll tell mm -hmm. you mine first. Can I? Is I was about 16 years old and I was with my dad and my dad taught me flying airplanes. And although I didn't go on to become a private pilot, I got my student pilot's license. And what I really loved about flying was not going from point A to point B. It was taking off and then going upside down <laughs> and doing loops and rolls and things. And so we would go on a Sunday and fly with some other friends. We'd meet all up at an airport and this airport had breakfast. So we had breakfast. And one of my dad's friends had this state-of-the-art home-built airplane. It was a biplane called a Kristen Eagle. And on the side of it was painted uh, in rainbow as an eagle. And it was at the time, one of the most highly aerobatic airplanes going. And this gentleman that flew the plane, he says, how about young Sandra? Do you want to a ride. <laughs> and my dad's like, we just had breakfast, you're going to get sick. And I said, No, I want to ride. So I had to get strapped in to a parachute to get in. And no sooner did we take off and this guy flipped the airplane upside down. And he says, Okay, kid, you got it. So there I am holding the stick. And we did loops and rolls and all kinds of hammerhead stalls and just everything. And I know I find that a favorite memory is always involves somebody else. And this one involved my dad. And so I can still remember that big smile on my face. And it's just a memory that's locked in for life. Mm. Mm. Good, I can relate to that so much. And on my 40th birthday, I'm a terrible flyer. I hate flying, I, well, I don't know, I love it. Um, but on my 40th birthday, to get me over the fear of flying, I, I went to have a flying lesson. And I always remember, she said, you're gonna take off and, and I was thinking, I've never done this before, but we'll go for it. And, and unbeknown to me, she's controlling everything at the same time. But when we got up there, she said, oh, we're going to do a loop. And I'm like, yep, no, we're not. Because <laughs> I'm petrified. I was holding onto the side of the door and every, it's only a little tiny plane. And I know she said, you're going to push that throttle forward. And I thought, that looks like something off a lawnmower. So I pushed it forward. And, and then she had this throttle in front. She said, you're going to push it down. So we're going to get to 110 knots. And as soon as you see that go, you're going to pull it back. And I'm not joking. It was just, I, I, it's probably the closest thing I can imagine to explain. It was like being in space. Gravity seemed to disappear uh, and it was just going over and watching the earth in front of you, then seeing the sky and as you come back around, seeing the earth again, one of the most exhilarating feelings. And I realized after about five minutes, I wasn't holding onto the doors or anything else on my seat. I'd lost the fear of flying. And, and to me, 
it, it was wonderful. And when she said, oh, you're going to land us in, and she put her hands behind her head, moved her feet off the controls, and I thought, okay, she just talked me through it. And I thought, incredible. But even where she, um, she probably say this, turned the engine off and said, this plane can glide as well. And I'm like, no engine, we're gliding. <laughs> so it, it, and restarted it. And she was explaining when things went wrong in planes and how they get round it. It took all the fear because you just think the capabilities of pilots and what the training they have and what they go through and they know that knowledge and experience is, is absolutely wonderful. So when you told your story, it reminded me of that. But one of my favorite memories is quite a personal one. It's my grandfather. And I know, um, you know when you're a child and you're told you can't play with this, you can't use that because everything's dangerous and sharp. Well, he used to chop the wood for the fire. Uh, and he, he was watching me watch him and he says, come on then, have a go. And I'm thinking, wow, the first time I've been let loose with anything. So when he chopped everything up and he showed me how to do it, it, it created a confidence in me, it created something where I've been trusted and it melt probably about six years old and it made me feel, an adult made me feel I could do something that somebody else could do. Even where he showed me how to down to whittle wood and how to crack a piece of wood in the right place and do it. It, it, it just these little memories we have and cherish that stick with us. Um, for life and even where just recently well not that long ago um, I took Kerry to where he used to live and the lanes and everything very emotional journey but how those memories come back and and we just you can almost feel them as well it's fantastic mm. isn't it mm. I've got a couple one is where I recognize that I'm still being my authentic self because I'm a little bit of a control freak you see oh. <laughs> and so when I was very young I was about four and a half, maybe five years old, and we were at the beach because we live, we're surrounded by coastlines. And we were at the beach with all my grandparents, both sets of grandparents, my mum, my dad, my brother, and me. Now, of course, on the beach, sand goes on the blanket, as expected. But I don't like that because the blanket should be on the sand. <laughs> so all the food was out, ready to be set. And I never thought about anything other than having this blanket neatly set. So I picked up the blanket and I shook it. <laughs> and I remember everybody screaming out that I needed to put the blanket down. Well, that wasn't really in my thoughts about the sand going in the food. It was more appropriate to have the blanket neat and tidy with stones on either end. So to add to it, it was actually my granddad was filming it because he was an absolute avid um, photographer he loved cameras and he was filming this so not only do I have the memory of it a living memory I actually still have the film <laughs> and I watch I watched that um, over and over again when I was younger of that incident seen from the perspective of somebody else and I remember when I was with my grandparents and family get-togethers and my granddad I was an avid photographer but he had he used to set um, the, the lens on the camera and the lens on the camera, the minute thing. So he'd take a photograph and then he'd change it and then he'd take a photograph and then he'd change it. Of course, you get that ache in your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> in Scotland, we say cheese. <laughs> and then he'd say, no, the lighting's all wrong. And he'd take another and then he'd take another. But some of those photographs, I'm so pleased he went to the efforts he did because they are cat they capture the moment the laughter the love the coming together the family gatherings and you're right our greatest memories are with those um other people that we spend time with mm. oh now i've got a reason that i asked this question now i'm going to do what phil does i've got a little secret now come in close come on a little closer a little closer there's a reason we have had our world turned upside down since COVID hit many have lost myself included jobs obviously relationships there's been death there's been illness there's been all kinds of things people are feeling lousy now if you want to jump on the bandwagon to make yourself and other people feel good get them in a conversation about their most favorite memories because how do you guys feel right now after sharing oh Fabulous. i'm way down memory lane yes. <laughs> I can picture everything that Kerry said. I've seen the photographs and a little bit of the film uh, and the, even the memory smells. Absolutely everything's coming back to me of that era. It's fantastic. And I feel good too. I'm thinking of my dad. And if anyone who's watching right now wants to 
leave a message in the comments about your favorite memory and share. But ask people what they feel good about, what their favorite memory is, favorite places they like to travel, favorite food. I don't know, get people on those kind of conversations. It's good for the soul. It really is. Now, speaking of the soul, on Tuesdays, we have a relatively new class that we started with you guys. And we were in your spiritual healing class yesterday. And it just, it felt like it nourished my soul. And Carrie, you said something yesterday that really struck me pretty hard is our cup floweth over. I think that's the expression you said. And if our cup is empty, there's really nothing to flow over. And I know for myself, and I think there's a lot of us who are caregivers and helping others and doing a lot, but could you talk just a little bit about what the Tuesday class is? Because I know it is something nurturing and it Help, we're all souls having a human experience and it gives us that, that boost for life. Yeah, the Tuesday, when we were doing our Wednesday and Thursday classes, we saw that there was something missing and that something was about the spirit, what we call the spiritualization of the self. So we called it the way to your spirit. Now, when people start on their spiritual development, their psychic awareness or their mediumship or just understanding life after death, there's a journey we go through and that journey isn't often spoken about, about the peaks, the troughs, the hard times, the lonely times, the wonderful times, the pure times of where you're in immense joy with the spirit world or with your own spirit. There was nobody really talking about that. So the Tuesday each month is a standalone series of classes. We do a class on different aspects of what might be happening. We have, um, like the, the class we did on Tuesday last week was about the six steps of um, spiritual awakening. So we give very clear um, steps. I think the week before was about the five steps to finding self, finding purpose. So we have each week, there is a very set um, topic to be looked at but we find that when we speak about our experiences, when we give the steps to becoming, there's so much clarity lands with people because suddenly they realize, oh, this is all meant to be. I'm meant to be in this space of feeling lost. I'm meant to be feel in this space of feeling exhilarated. I'm meant to be in this space of contentment because this is where I am. So we've in some ways normalized that spiritual journey. Now we, we're, Tuesday is our last week of this month and then we start a new series. So we'll be able to share more steps to and understandings about the process. And there are people on there that have no interest in psychic or mediumship development, but they've had so much healing of self come through it and also understanding other people that might be going through tough times there's a generosity of spirit with self and others and we've had such beautiful feedback about it that the numbers just um keep coming in in a way that there's something happening in there that draws people back because it's food for the soul mm. i think we we all look to spiritual leaders especially around the current times of covid and, but we've got to realize that those spiritual leaders or, or, and whoever you're thinking of or inspiring inspirational speakers have come through not a wonderful time where they've learned the hardships of life and they've started to learn them lessons and create a real forgive me the pun the temple inside where they can go and reflect and and, and look at the purpose of life and the intention and realize that they are it is just their self-limiting beliefs that that's held them in this position and once they've worked through it and discovered these spiritual truths that the, our thoughts, our intentions are, are seen by the universe because we are glass houses. We start to then change our internal world um, that makes us feel better, allows the true self to come forward and, and releases a lot of shackles that life has put on us and other people's opinions. Then we start to change our outer world and look at it differently. So it's all about giving that sense of normality whatever normal is that we all can reach a level of happiness contentment a spirituality or a spiritualization where we can grow from what we call those growing pains of life and turn them into positives and Kerry has spoken about something I was going to mention you don't have to be 
the aspiring medium or, or somebody who's looking at spiritual ability. This is for everyone. This is to set yourself free, create real transformational changes through simple techniques of mindfulness, meditation, sitting in the power, and talking about the different stages that we all go through. Kerry mentioned the six stages uh, of the awakening, but there's so much more that we talk about and bring our own personal experiences in to make it relatable that everybody can really um, achieve that this spiritual state of freeing the self and having life more happier and contented. Yeah, there's something to it. It's something really great. And as I was saying at the Sunday gathering, you don't have to be in one of our courses to get somewhere. You don't need to be in the mediumship course to be a practicing medium doing readings on people. It, just by nature of exercising that psychic muscle and realizing that we are so much more than we know. In fact, one of my podcasts, Shades of the Afterlife, episode 40 just came out. Hard to believe, 40, and we have 70 Sunday gatherings. But within the episode, I have a remote viewing exercise for people. I tell people I've got a bag sitting here and there's something in the bag. So I ask people through a di few different steps to not see what's in the bag, but see elements of it. And you'll have to listen to the episode to know what's in the bag, but whether it's a psychic or medium course or doing some of these ESP type techniques, we realize we are so much more and we must be connected to all of it. I wanted to ask you guys, you've now been at our weekly courses for well over a year. I mean, I think we started in May of 2020. What difference has it made in the participants who are going through them? What, how have you seen them transform? I, th I think there was the, the first one we noticed was a, a young lady and she'd been with us for some time and I'm not going to name her, but she, she, she said how kind of she recognized or realized she'd become. And I remember saying it and it hit me. And I remember, I can remember more or less everyone that's come through the doors and where they've started in a very unconfident way, wondering if it's the right thing to do, question the self-beliefs, but we can see them grow over time. And recently where we shared with a few of them where we remember their emails they sent to us and um, what they put in them. And we said, can you remember those days and can you see how you are now? Uh, and the, the changes has been miraculous. But to see people grow in confidence, grow in personality, to let their light shine has been absolutely amazing, hasn't it? That, that some of the personal journeys and stories, and, and we often talk about clubs and organizations we don't want to be in where we've lost people and children, but to see them find joy in life, see them really become who they're meant to be uh, and find happiness. And even where you see people and they're very quiet and they don't speak, then you see them laughing out loud. You see them tears of joy in their eyes and, uh, and speaking and forgetting about all their worries it's it's, it's a very um humbling experience mm -hmm. so i think some of what we find is yes they came in in the first instance to develop psychic or mediumistic abilities but actually what they've ended up developing is themselves inside and that's the journey that we've drawn their attention to because as we know psychic and mediumship is a byproduct of when people look inside and can claim their individuality and their humanness and their uniqueness and their and gain that confidence through being authentically them. So we've we've got such an environment where people are able to be vulnerable in a safe environment where they can. We've got people that come on early to the classes just to be able to chat. We've had to bring the time going earlier because they enjoy that community time of having a chat and sharing stories and checking in on each other. And we get brought into that. So that's really um, a privileged place to be. So it's there has been an, an incredible change with such a huge number of people, probably everybody in mm. some instances. And I think on the Wednesdays where we've done a lot of the psychic work, the soul to soul work, really getting them to work through their emanations and what they find similar in each other and how it feels through themselves and knowing that it is of self, that it know it is psychic and not the, the spirit world, how they've started to 
explore and really have those self-realizations where they've found things out about themselves and understood themselves and, and really move past those self-limiting beliefs and found in a strength that they can do this, that they can use their life experiences um, for good. So all that hurt and grief they've been through, they can feel in another and find the words that help that other person. So I think it's been in, in a way very nurturing, uh, almost in a coaching sense of moving them forward, but also very much in a counselling aspect where they've taken a look at themselves and reflected and gone on that self-empowerment journey of finding those truths about themselves that, that's given them strength and confidence. So. Mm. Yeah, people need people. And it's been a very tough time that, you know, uh, thankfully, you guys have each other. I've got my mom, so we're able to have hugs. But not a lot of people have people around. And we people need to belong. We really do. And so to have this community, I am so proud of it. I really am. And to some, you know, what we talk about might seem crazy. And I remember Long before I got interested in life after death, I really thought psychics and mediums, no offense, you guys were crazy. <laughs> I did. I thought these people need to get a life. There's no evidence for any of that. And it was just me being shallow, not taking the time, being very egotistic and opinionated. And that was me. And it was interesting because earlier my mom was flicking through the channels and there was one of these metaphysical gurus on, and I'm thinking, oh my God, give me a break. This guy sounds crazy. And then it dawned on me, that's probably how people think of me, and you guys as well. And it's not a lot of people that buy into this, will take the time to research, do the work to discover this stuff is real. But once you've found your family, you don't want to let go because it really feels good to be part of our family, doesn't it? It does. It brings something really special and it enriches our life as well. We don't necessarily have to go on early and provide that space, but we want to. And then on the weeks where we, we do four weeks in a month, then there's the week where we're thinking, oh, we've got a spare Wednesday. We could be anywhere else. But we put on a bonus class and invite everybody to it because that's what the community is about. Mm. When we are together, we're teaching, we're able to share the truth about the spirit world, we'll be able to give places for people to feel empowered and to learn. We're also giving a place for people to come together. It's much more about media, much more than just mediumship and psychic development. And we're really proud to be able to be part of that. That community is only there because people have wanted to be part of a community, but have chosen to keep coming back to We Don't Die, to keep coming back to what we're providing because it suits them. It's a fit for them. Might not be a fit for everybody, but the community is growing of people that have been there, taken a break and come back or are there for some classes or come to the Sunday gathering or come to some of the other classes through the week, makes no difference. They're part of it. It really does, doesn't it? Because I'm thinking about what we said, what you said about we come on early. So we turn up 20 minutes early to the class. People come in to catch up and, and, and speak. And it's nice just to mute ourselves and let everyone speak amongst themselves. And people from Canada that have not seen each other or people from USA that usually catch up but have not. It's down just under. Down under as well. It's like the dedication of people down under turning up at ridiculous times in the morning to participate and the wide awake. It's absolutely phenomenal. Then, then we go into the class and we have a 30 or 40 minute lecture on an aspect of it, whatever we're teaching that night. Then they have a couple of sessions where they're practicing and we're popping in the breakout room, supporting, helping, because we have two computers so we can get in, in, in the, all of the rooms. Then afterwards, we do the questions and answers, what people have reflected on, what they've taken away. Then the questions pop up. So even though we might have seven till nine, we're spending probably half six till half nine. Half nine, exactly. <laughs> so, but it, it, it's a home. People have become to rely on it, become of a support network, um, and it's become a normal aspect of the life. And, and were the rare times we have had that time off, we've actually um, so, they come back on. We, we, we've missed you. We, we've, 
it, it, it's, it's phenomenal that the, the feedback that we get when we go on, oh, it felt like my life's ended, you've not been there. And it, it's it's just, I can't find the words. It is yeah, very, very it's wonderful. If anybody wants to join our family and come on one of our free things or, or come to a demonstration or join one of our classes, go to we don't die.com. And at the top of the page, you can click on the store or the calendar to find out our schedule or the Sunday gathering link is there. Join in. I've got tons of episodes as well. I know for me, something that's joined me into this conversation is uh, death and having severe grief. And I know by the emails that we get and the people that we talk to, that it really does help people not dip into that deep hole of grief and depression and, and helps. I mean, it's a terrible journey to go through. And anybody who's watching that's got a loved one who has transitioned, we are sorry. It, it is very painful. It's a hard thing. We give lots of, um, there's good grief information, especially in my book, which you can get a free copy to. If you just sign up for my email list, you get a free copy. Chapter 10 is all about grief. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, though, is I know that we have some of your loyal fans and followers watching right now. That is your students. So shout out to all the students in our community. We've got two things coming up in August. You've got the self-coaching medium, and then that's August 11th through 14th. And then deepening the evidence for your psychic and medium students on August 28th. Can we talk a little bit about what those are? And then we can bid farewell to our friends that are watching? Absolutely. The self-coaching medium, to our knowledge, has not been delivered online anywhere in the world before. It is, Phil and I come from a counselling and coaching background as well as mediumship. So we had a look at the coaching aspect that we use for executives, for nurses, for doctors, for people like you and I, that life coaching. And we thought, and we have done for years incorporated that into our mediumship training but we thought what if we were to give some coaching skills to our medium students students of mediumship and with, that would allow them to learn about self gain the tools to do that introspective learning and reflection to be able to coach self through and be able to observe in that moment when the triggers are rather than a week after and go ah that's what was happening and then be able to change the behaviors to see what effect that would have in their mediumship so these four days are about coaching skills having a look at self and then doing mediumship and seeing where things pop up so we create awareness then we do our our mediumship work and then we go ah that's what happens and through the course people will be able to gain the coaching skills to be able to be gentle with self but observe and move through it yeah. and it's very similar in deepening the evidence because when we work as a medium and um, we hear a lot of people saying well what's next what am i going to say next well we're, we're going to learn you to look at the evidence you've got and really see it and see behind it and underneath it so you can make more statements but the key to this is really understanding what you've got so when you see it and underneath it and behind it and you realize what you have you can deliver it with full impact but also to look at certain abilities like clairvoyance how to use it properly that factual uh, ability of clear audience how we work with that and different methods to really make the most of the evidence but it gives you confidence by knowing what to do and once you start this process it changes the whole dynamics of your mediumship because what we see a lot of today is people making those general statements and not really understanding it or what we see a lot of is where they, they see a picture and say there's something about this then expect the recipient to tell them what it is well we want to be the mediums and we want to teach the mediums of the future to use the correct presentation and tell the person exactly what it means not just describe the picture but tell make the statements from the picture so when we talk about deepening the evidence it's all of what i've said but it gives you a real confidence of knowledge of knowing what to do and not to get caught in those headlights of skipping along the surface with those general statements but to look at the practical objective evidence we can gain and we just it's already there we just need to see it and, and be aware of what we're saying so that's what deep in, and it really does inspire you to be really creative with your mediumship as well 
Wonderful. Well, I'm going to leave you with one last question. And those of you who are watching and would like to answer it as well, you can. If you, if I could give you an airline ticket to anywhere in the world and drop you at your favorite location, where would you choose? Oh, that's easy for me. Wherever you're yeah, living. Wherever you are. You guys are very sweet. Now, I'm going with you on this trip. So where would you take me? Disney. On a cruise ship or Disney. Oh, 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 Disney or cruise ship. Cruise ship or Disney. <laughs> Disney or cruise ship and where I would take you guys is to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. We'd watch the sunrise on the beach. And when the sun comes up, we'd probably order a Bloody Mary or something and just play, go out <laughs> dancing, go on the sea, go deep sea fishing. Oh. All right, guys. Thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you everybody who's watching. Carrie and Phil, you wanna say any last words? Thank you for spending time with us, those that are watching now or um, watching in the future time. Come and join us. We have a hoot. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to Kira Newton for tonight's demonstration. She's really made us proud. We have so many students that are very nearly there to be on the Sunday gathering. Just that little. So I have mm. faith, guys. Um, know that you're making a difference mm. and you're almost there. And it gives you that real incentive to see one of your community members to be there working on your behalf as well. So thank you to everyone that's working the socks off at the moment. That includes you, Sandra. Correct. Thank you. And you guys as well. And you just made me blush and smile when you said wherever I was. Oh, love you guys. Carrie and Phil's website is the spirit and soul foundation.co.uk. And whatever you can't find there, you can find it we don't die.com. We are birds of a feather. We do stick together and we love each other. So I'm going to say goodbye to you guys for now and leave some comments below. We, we love doing these kind of pop-up things. And come join us on a demonstration, our Sunday gathering, or one of our courses. They start the first week of every month. So bye for now, everyone. <laughs>